Damian Woody alongside him. Man, we were prepared to have some fun tonight, talk some Islanders and, 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 and do that, and uh, talk about the Browns and the way things might, might break for them in the second half. But all of that is moved to the side. In all of your time in the league, and you saw a lot and accomplished a lot, you ever seen anything like this? Never seen. I've never seen anything like that. How do that. you react to it? The brotherhood <clears throat> that is. How do you react to seeing a guy do that? I would have lost my mind. Basically how the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive lineman did it. That's Pouncey. Pouncey yep. and, and, and crew. That's exactly what I would have done because what Miles Garrett did was inexcusable. The fact that you rip a guy's helmet off and then you hit him upside the hel head with the helmet. Scott, I've, I've seen a lot of things in the National Football League during my 12-year career, but I've never seen something like that. I think every anytime a helmet comes off, and, and as a skirmish, everyone freaks out. But isn't there something of a code in you when a guy loses his hat that you say, you're not going to hit him with your fist, let alone a helmet? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, usually, when the helmet, usually when the helmet comes off, everybody's like, whoa. Right. Okay, we need to chill. But, I mean, he just literally took his helmet and hit him upside the head. To me, that's like assault. Right. right. It, that's, that's the first thing I, I, you know, I said to myself was, that's assault on the football field. And, and I think that in moments like these, particularly given what we do, you, you try to be measured and you try to ask yourself, what's reasonable? What's a reasonable reaction? But I'm with you. I mean, he hit a man in the head with that. I mean, look, these things are heavy, man. Right. Like, I mean, I have no idea. If, if you don't know, like, this thing weighs a lot. It's a weapon. Right. And Miles Garrett is a big man. Yeah, that, that, I mean, Baker Mayfield said it more calmly than I'm saying it now. But, I mean, whatever the, whatever the fine or the suspension is, it's got to be severe because Miles Garrett has flirted with 15-yard penalties all year. That's one thing. That's dumb. This is, feels almost criminal to me. The, you, you touched upon it already, okay? In the prime time game against the Jets, he had a couple personal foul penalties. Now, fast forward to this. You do something this stupid, you're Miles Garrett. You're in the middle of a playoff push. You're going to get suspended. You're the best player on their team, and now you're not going to be available. How dumb is that? That's the same. That's what we've been talking about with the Cleveland Browns, how undisciplined the penalties, how, the penalty yardage, the amount of penalties that the Cleveland Browns have racked up. So now instead of us talking about the Cleveland Browns getting a critical divisional win, right. everything's going to focus on Miles Garrett and Freddie Kitchens. Does he have control of the Cleveland Browns team? If you get an offsides, you get a you get a, a personal foul. Even that's one thing. This is this is wholly separate from that. This is an entirely different level of conversation. We want to welcome in John Perry, our officiating uh, officiating expert and analyst. And and John, in a situation like this, would the on field officiating crew be consulted by the league when the league is trying to sort of met out what ought to be done in terms of fine slash suspension? Well, the officials on the field will have nothing to do as far as suspensions or fines, but the league and using video based on the new rule, anytime there's a personal foul, they can get involved with ejection. I don't think we need video here. What a blemish uh, to end this football game. Great rivalry. It's always heated. We get that. But this crosses the line and it's just not a good visual for the National Football League. John, w without question, and just, just to be clear here, I, I understand they wouldn't be asked in terms of what, what, what the fine or suspension should be. I'm just asking, would they be, would they be asked for any clarity to, tr to try to provide a framework of what, what went on throughout the evening because there were a number of helmet-to-helmet -helmet shots? Is there anything that the league would be looking for that the, where the officiating crew could provide context as far as the night went? That's all I'm asking. Oh, yeah, I think based on how this game ends, it's going to be dissected for several days, start to finish, uh, conversations that took on the field, plays that were called, plays that were not called, and then, of course, the end of this foot ga football game with the helmet coming off, the assault on the head, Pouncey coming back, kicking and punching. There's a lot of things that they'll spend a great deal amount of time this week, week dissecting. John, you, you, you saw everything in your, in your career, and, I mean, we so, Super Bowls and all the rest, and you got there because of your level of acumen for what you did. You ever see anything like this in games that you officiated, anything that, that rose to this level? No. We had a playoff game in 2016 with the Steelers and the Bengals. Everybody would recall that. Sure. We had a lot of issues in that football game, but nothing – Nothing rose to the level of ripping off a player's helmet 
and continuing that action and throwing a punch, using it as a weapon on a football field. No, I've right, never, John, in 20 years, I've never seen it. All right, John, thank you so much for your time and your context. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.